Hey everybody, Lene here, the instructor trainer at Magoosh, and in this video, I'm going to share some tips with you for how to use your GRE score report to prepare for a retake of the exam. If you like this video, I've got great news for you. There is plenty more where this came from. Why don't you go ahead and like this video, because I'm sure that you will, and subscribe to the Magoosh channel where you'll find a lot of great content just like this. So if you're here, that probably means you've taken the GRE and you weren't super excited with where your score landed. You're certainly not alone. That happens to a lot of test takers, especially the first time they take the GRE test. If that's you, you're probably also likely wondering what you should do next. How will you improve your score when it comes to the retake? Well, there are a lot of steps that I would recommend to you. One of them, of course, is signing up for Magoosh's online resources. Magoosh's online resources are affordable, they are fun, and they come with a score improvement guarantee. I will link some resources for you below so that you can check those out. In addition to signing up for the Magoosh GRE resources, careful analysis of your score report will reveal strengths and also areas of opportunity for you to prioritize as you prepare for your retake. Therefore, analyzing those scores should be your first step in the process. When you dig into that score report and you're analyzing your GRE test results, it's really important that you have a very solid understanding of what those results even mean. Both the verbal and quantitative sections are scored in one point increments on a 130 to a 170 scale. For the AWA, otherwise known as the analytical writing section, scores are in half point increments on a scale of zero to six. You'll also see your score in percentiles. The percentile scores tell you how well you did in comparison to other test takers on each of the two sections. What that means is if a score lands in the 25th percentile, you are below average. You've only scored higher than 25% of the other test takers. If you score in the 50th percentile for either the verbal or quantitative section, your score is on par with the average test taker. And if your score lands in the 99th percentile, that is exceptional. That means you've scored higher than 99% of all the other people who have taken this exam. So bottom line, the higher your percentile, the better your overall score is on the GRE test. While percentiles certainly aren't everything, they can help you understand where you're scoring in comparison to other test takers and also help you understand how much of an improvement you need to make to meet your target score. This is important because despite the fact that the verbal and quantitative reasoning sections are scored on that same 130 to 170 scale, the percentiles for those sections are incredibly different. It's important for you to understand how far off you are percentile wise in relation to your target score. This will help you plan for your retake accordingly. To help you better understand percentiles, I will link a resource below for the GRE scores in comparison to the percentiles. Now, after all this percentile talk, I do not want you to feel intimidated by percentiles. Realistically, how well you score on the GRE really does depend on a number of different factors, including how much time and effort you have to put into studying, what schools you're applying to and how competitive those schools are, and your individual strengths and weaknesses in the areas of math, reading, and writing. Once you understand your score and how much you need to improve to hit your target score, the next step is to prioritize your areas of opportunity. It's much easier to focus on those areas of opportunity than it is to take what's already a strength you have and make it even better. Unfortunately, the GRE score report is not going to provide you with a breakdown on how you did for each section by content, like how you did on geometry versus how you did on algebra, etc. But if you take a practice test with Magoosh, you will see that kind of specific breakdown. Pairing your practice test results from your Magoosh practice test 
with your actual GRE score report will really help you hone in on your individual areas of opportunity in order to maximize your score improvement. If you decide that you'd rather not take a practice test with Magoosh, that's okay, but think about this. You probably can't recall which concepts stumped you on test day. And since you need to focus your study on those areas, it'll really help to have a test that gives you a topic breakdown so that you are better able to identify the subjects that you need to spend more time reviewing before you take that next GRE test. You have a 21 day waiting period between the time you took your first GRE and the time that you are allowed to take your second GRE. If you have time to wait, don't rush it. There's no benefit to rushing in and taking the GRE again if you have not had time to work on your weaknesses and prepare for that retake. Your score is very unlikely to magically improve with little to no time for additional practice. Magoosh has options for self-study or for live classes. We also have a number of study plans to choose from depending on how much time you have between now and when you need to take your exam. Bottom line, if you put in the appropriate amount of time to prepare for your retake and then also use Magoosh resources to facilitate the process, I'm sure you'll see a significant improvement in your scores on that retake. I truly hope you found the advice in this video helpful. And of course, best of luck in all of your studies and especially if you are preparing to retake the GRE.